Hello Game Game Crafters, welcome back to our channel. We've been on an amazing journey, bringing life into minion waves, constructing tactical towers and even programming them to aim at target. Today we are taking a deeper dive into our UI interface script. We'll be equipping it to handle not just one but multiple collider, enhancing the dynamics of our game. So are you ready to add another layer of complexity to our game world? Let's dive in. Okay, so first let's check what the problem is. Let's go to the hierarchy panel and find your tower. And here, let's check how many colliders are placed on this tower. First, there is the box collider, which is our main collider for the tower. Then we have a sphere collider, which we added in the previous episode. And we also have the Gatling box collider. Now, we're having issues with this because we're only disabling the main box collider here. So let's demonstrate that. Let's hit play and try to place a new tower. You see the raycast actually hits another collider on the tower. So that is the main problem, but there is another one. Let's start and fix this first. Let's go into the UI interface. And here, let's check the code. We're first raycasting and see if the raycast heads. We instantiate an object and then we only disable the main collider. Now, we need two methods. Let's call it private void disable colliders. And here, let's say set colliders enabled. So we have to create this method. Uh, let's say because this is false and private void enable colliders, which is the same thing, but true. So let's create this method, double click on the name hit the light bulb and generate method. Let's remove the throw. And in here, we're going to require the uh, child colliders and also the main colliders. So we can create a, an array with collider. And let's name it child colliders. And to get all these colliders into this variable, we can simply do focus object, which is basically our main game object that we have create instantiated and get component, sorry, get components. Don't forget to the S at the end in children. And we want all the colliders. So collider and then say to this includes the uh, true includes the inactive ones as well. Now let's do another one. So collider and make it an array again, because now we want all the colliders on the main component on the main M game object, basically. So main colliders equals focus object dot get components collider. Okay, so now we're having all the colliders on our tower. First, we can do a for loop that goes through all our children and set them to false or true, depending on our variable here. Let's say enable, let's change that name. So we can do that by for each collider. Let's name it collider in child colliders and simply call collider dot enabled equals enable. And now we need another for loop. So you can just copy this for loop here and change the main children with the child ch colliders with the main colliders. Great. Now we just need to use this. So we can use it instead of this one disable colliders and instead of 
oh we're actually not even setting them to true anymore but we can simply do that here after we position it so enable colliders and that should be it for setting the colliders now let's go back into unity and test it okay let's clear this and hit play so now try to position everything seems to be fine however you might have noticed the other issue we're having right now which is basically if we're trying to position this game object here we won't be able to do that that's because the sphere collider now it's active on the other tower we have positioned here so we need a custom recast that goes through this sphere collider which is of type is trigger so let's hit on play again so we stop it and go back into the ui interface now let's create that custom method so let's go on the bottom and create a new method private bool let's call it raycast without triggers and we need to pass in a ray and we can also pass in a raycast hit but let's make it out so we can change that and we don't have to return anything besides this bool so we can do out raycast hit let's name it hit and in here we can make use of a method called raycast all this method will basically return all the hits that this array will ever touch so we can do raycast hit and make it an array because there are a lot of hits so let's say hits equals with physics dot raycast all and in here we need to pass in the array now this method would actually go to infinity so we can also set a distance like for example passing here like a max distance in which we want this array to stop going through through objects but for now just to demonstrate let's leave it array and now we need to sort all these hits based on the distance so we don't have to make a lot of computations in the for loop that we're gonna create so we can do array dot sort and make sure to use this array you need to include system so using system at the top of the file and on here we can do hits so we pass in our array hits from here and we want x and y and here x dot distance dot compare to y dot distance okay so now we have the hits sorted and we need a for loop so for each raycast hit let's say raycast in hits so we're going through all our hits and if we don't have a raycast hit dot collider that is trigger we return after we put the the new value in the hit variable that is gonna go out here so hit equals raycast hit and return true because we found a, a collider that doesn't have a trigger that's what basically this if statement means otherwise we don't do anything and after this for loop we can say that we haven't found any hit so we do hit equals new raycast raycast hit so we return a valid hit just in case and then return false now let's make use of this uh, this method instead of physic raycast we can do raycast without triggers pass in the ray and the hit 
And let's do the same for this one. And for this one as well. Okay, and now before we go off and test it, let's add another condition here just to make sure we always have a focus object on get mouse button and get mouse button up. So end focus object not equals not copy it and put it in get mouse button up as well. Great, let's test it and see what happens. Hit play and now try to position the towers. And that wraps up our deep dive into handling multiple colliders in our UI interface script. Thanks for coding along and adding the intrinsic layer to our game's dynamic, but don't worry, our game crafting journey is far from over. In our next episode, we're all set to breathe some more life into our game. Yes, you guessed it right. We'll be crafting a health bar for our minions, adding more tension and strategy to our tower defense game. If that sounds exciting, don't miss out on this next step in our journey. Be sure to smash that like button if you've learned something today and don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell icon so you'll be notified when our next tutorial is live. Until then, happy coding and see you in the next video.